every time. Uh, we don't do no cap. Uh, report only facts. The Progress Report. What's going on? It's your girl Lala Shepard. Boss Brit the most lit. What's up? It's your girl DJ Excel. This is the Progress Report. And if y'all heard us early, it's the AE takeover tonight. Man, we got the CEO in the building, Mr. Boom Man. What's good? Big boss. Boom Man, still booming. Let's get it. Let's What's up, go. Man? What's up? What's up? Man, yeah, first man. and foremost, you know, thank you for being here. It definitely sure. means a lot. You know, we like to talk to progressive people, and you are a progressive person. And I like your energy. You know? Yeah, this is the aura. Feel good. Yes. Yes. You know, it's, it's good so, energy, man. Yeah. So. Officially introduce yourself to the world. Um, Authentic Empire, CEO. What's going on? It's your girl, Lala Shepard. Boss Brit the most lit. What's up? It's your girl, DJ Excel. And look, we interview some of the biggest artists on the come up. Hey, man, if you ever in Atlanta, y'all make sure y'all hit us up now. Hey, hit us up today. It's where you need to be, man. A progress support. DM us right now. Let's go. Um, boom, man. Still booming. It's Authentic and that's no cap. Mm -hmm. No cap. Definitely, man. So... You know, talk about being a CEO of Authentic Empire AE. When did y'all get started? Uh, I started Authentic Empire in 2017. Um, I started with my homeboy, Dred Dro, mm -hmm. and uh, I had another uh, silent investor named Cash at the time. Um, and we started it with this white kid named Noah Sharp. He was a six foot six white kid. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I had labels before. I'm behind a lot of stuff that a lot of people may not know. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I had recently just came out of a partnership with this company called Lights Global. Mm -hmm. um, and in that company, we did like uh, Juju on the Beat. Mm -hmm. We did um, <clears throat> Hot Mr. Hot Spot and the Twins mm -hmm. with the Me and My Friends record. Um, and we had recently signed Lil Pump. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So we okay. did a, a label deal over Rest at Warner. Lil Pump. Dope. Huh? I was saying I used to fuck with Lil Pump. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right. So yeah, I was I was a part of a lot of stuff, you know what I'm saying, behind the scenes. But okay. the uh, business got a little watery, a little murky, you know what I'm saying. And um, I just decided to just do my own thing, mm -hmm. and so right. I started I started Authentic Empire. But them still my brothers, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. uh, shout out to McGill, shout out to Dooney, you know what I'm saying. So you know we still do stuff, we still do business to this day. You know, it just I had to flap my oh, wings. Yeah. You feel me? Respect. Respect. Um, shoot, I'm trying to think of which way we should take it. Should we talk about your, you know, past even before AE? Yeah, I want to know like how you know? It's, what was before that. Yeah, like, how did all this come, come about? How do we build this empire? How did, how did Boom Man become to be Boom Man? Is the question. You know what I mean? And we know you was an artist before, so talk yeah. about the beginning of when you fell in love with music or how you got involved with music entertainment. Who so? Y'all finna ooh, we gonna be here a minute. We gonna, we gonna go there. We gotta go there. Said, how long y'all got? Home. We gonna be here a minute. You know, I just turned forty. You feel me? Hey, I just happy turned birthday, birthday. Yeah, yeah, bro! For life. Your birthday went crazy too. Oh man, come as on, it should have been. It's big mm -hmm. forty. What was man? the thing? It's a blessing to make it to forty. Big blessing. What was the thing for the uh, fortieth? It was a twenty-four carry birthday bash. Of course you know it was. Not private jets, Versace. You see me here? Of course. I went. I flew to. I took a private jet to Vegas. As you should. Got the road. Rose Royce Cullinan, you know what I'm saying? So, Damn, my birthday coming out. I, I was in about a party. Giving, but we ain't doing all that for her. I'm giving her two minutes. 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 I definitely top myself. I ain't going to cap. I definitely top myself. Much love. But uh, it started from high school, man. Like, you know, um, previous interviews, I, I always tell the story about how I started with K-Rap. Because mm -hmm. um, I like to give my man his flowers. He started a whole snap movement. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so... Um, me, my one of my part, my current partner now named Energy, uh, a friend of mine named Mike, and my partner Sid, we decided to start this little clique called Circle Click out of high school, and um, K Rap was gonna be our premier artist, you know, what I'm saying on the label. So I went to Morris Brown, they lost their accreditation, mm. so I was like, I'm gonna go to the military, get the funds up, uh, to put behind K Rap because yeah, he was, focused. yeah, yeah, he was a dope producer. <laughs> And uh, we bought the beat machine, we bought the computer, but when I went to the military, I went to Iraq. While I was overseas, he had already broke a record in ringtone sales for producing this song called Laffy Taffy. Mm -hmm. You know, come from on the beat machine and the computer that, that we like bought. That was definitely everybody ringtone. ringtone. Right, <laughs> yeah. broke a record. So I was like, dang, we on. I'm yeah. overseas, I'm like, I gotta get back. You mm. know what I'm saying? But when I came back, you know, obviously he had did things for Shawty Low. He had did the I'm the Man for him. Mm -hmm. He had did the... Uh, the do it, do it, the bubble gum, the do it, like the whole snap, 
That you know what I'm saying? Boom, boom. Fire. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, all that. All the snappy stuff. Ain't gonna throw it up, though. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hey. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, like, this is my boy. Yeah. yeah. Used to be so, for like five minutes. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, so <laughs> being around him, I wanted to get more involved in the music. Uh, I was in the military still, but, you know, it was certain situations where, you know, he had his own situation going, and I felt like I was being a burden. To his mm. to the people he had gathered like around. You just came. It felt like you was just coming back. Yeah, in. yeah. Mm-hmm. Like and they didn't want me really in the mix mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. So I said, man, I said next time I get me a producer, why why I messed up is I'm a sign him. Mm-hmm. So I end up in. But also while I was serving my time in the military, I end up finding this kid named K on the track. Mm-hmm. So I end up signing him because I thought he was harder than K rap. You mm-hmm. feel where I'm coming from? And um, <clears throat> brought him up to Atlanta. When I brought him to Atlanta. Uh, I took him around to K Rap because I was like, K Rap, we could sign this producer. He hard. And I and you know me, I'm like, he harder than you, no cap. <laughs> but I didn't want to tell him that. I was just like, hey, we could sign him and he could yeah. produce and make beats. But you know, we could start a little production company yeah. and you could sign him with me. We could do some and stuff. And you brought him back to him, mm-hmm. which is crazy. Right, because it's a coincidentally what helped me out. K Rap was his favorite producer. Mm, oh, that's, that's crazy. Hard. That's crazy. That's from. Very, very so that's just like how God was working yeah, in my favor at that time. For sure. mm-hmm. So, um, K- obviously, K Rap didn't want to do it. He felt like, you know, he was kind of biting his sound. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he had his own thing. You know how that be. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. I was like, it's cool. So we, we went to D4L Studio, dropped off some beat CDs, because at the time, CDs was big. And we were sending stuff through MySpace and the internet. And he <laughs> ended up sending some tracks to this group called FLY. Yep. So we created, so that was birthed the whole futuristic movement. Crazy. So I was behind the snap movement with K Rap. Yeah, yeah, then I got the futuristic crazy. movement with KE, yeah. you know what I'm saying, with the whole sound. So we did J Money, first name, last name, mm-hmm. Trappers of the Year. And then that was on the west side. Then on the east side, we had Swag Surfing going and Damn. Mr. Lennox. You know, come from then yeah. we end up doing Black Boy, White Boy. Crazy. You know what I'm saying? We end up doing all the movements. Like a classic. <laughs> yeah, we end up doing nice. All the Way Turned Up with Roscoe <laughs> Dash Show Out, uh, Future Magic, Jesus. Gucci Man Club hopping. Jesus, um, too many. We did Tamar Brass in the One. We it's it, it's just a lot of records. <laughs> yeah. Like even in the gospel, we did Lecrae. I'm turned. Like we oh just, wow, we were just Took doing it everywhere. Yeah, we we were just doing so much with Ke, and then I signed yeah. Roscoe Dash. You Shout know. out to Roscoe Dash. That's a real one right there. He still yeah. following me on the ground. He ain't unfollowing me. So, <laughs> so it's good in my books. You know I mean? play, we play that, I play that fool in FanDuel every day. Yeah, he, <laughs> a cool, he a cool guy. That's a nice history lesson, though, because like when you think of like movements, you don't think about like the producers. You think about like the artists. Right. And like the artists don't never be like shouting out the producer. Be like, oh, I started the movement. Like, right. And mm-hmm. really, it's like the producer's the part of that as well. Yeah, yeah. well, I've right. been behind and the scenes. Snap beat. Yeah. Like, yeah, I've been behind the scenes for over a decade. You know, I finally, when I did Authentic, I done, because of all the BS I done went through, I said, man, I'm finna put myself a little bit more in the forefront. You know what I'm saying? So people can respect it because mm. I used to always take the high road. Mm. Not no more. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Not no more. Well, talk about the fact of you, you know, being an artist as well. You know what I mean? If you look on YouTube, mm-hmm. you can see old visuals and all that good stuff. Songs with Future. Yeah. You so, I mean? yeah, I, I had songs with Future, 2 Chains, mm-hmm. Gucci, Yo Gotti, Waka, Rocco, Waka. K-Camp, Michael Montana. It's, I'm probably missing a few people. I don't work with some of everybody. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, as an artist, I was lit and I was independent. You know what I'm saying? I spent a lot of money out of my pocket. But the thing about it was is me doing a lot of novelty records and my spirit being a certain type of way and me having a fun type energy, the type of music that I was making, it I was I'm from the streets of Atlanta, but my music wasn't really street like that. Mm-hmm. You get where I'm coming from? So uh, I felt like I had a hard I had a hard time being relatable as an artist, you know what I'm saying? Gotcha. And um because my spirit was different, you know. So in the beginning, a lot of the songs and the records, if you you know, they was kid friendly, they was fun, right. you know what I'm saying? It was more energetic. It wasn't like street, but you know, I'm from Atlanta. I done stayed in every projects, but I wasn't promoting selling drugs because I never sold drugs. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it was all about getting money, and it's, you can only do so much talking about that and fucking hoes, and you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, and then as you grow, you kind of be off from that wavelength. So. Um, I just said, let me get back to push an artist. Even though I made a lot of money as an artist, I lost my mom in 2012, and it mm-hmm. stopped being fun for me. Mm-hmm. Se- separated Rest ways with Roscoe, separated ways with KE, and it was like I'm back at the drawing board. Mm-hmm. So it's like for me, 
it felt like at that moment, where I probably should just push through, I felt like in that moment, um, anytime I started doing stuff for myself, people would switch on me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It was like a, almost like an envy, like an envy thing that kind of kicked in. So it was like I was by myself and I was isolated. So I was just like, let me just get back to helping other people because I didn't feel as attacked. But then it got to a point where I started saying, fuck it, damn if I do, damn if I don't, I could curse them. Yeah, you did. You did. You did. Because I, I usually don't curse no, anyway. But you know, I just gotta asking. emphasize how I really felt. You right, feel right, me? Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? For all the people who tried to keep me down, I ain't forgot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we here now. Well, look, a couple of questions within that. My mm-hmm. first question yes. is, um, what was it like being independent back during that time? And also, too, like, like was you on top of your business? You know, paperwork and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah, man, being independent back then was super, super fun. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to lie because it was a time where it was a purity to it. You know what I'm saying? Um, you was really out here passing out CDs, passing out flyers. I used to go to four miles a day. I used to go to mm-hmm. four clubs a night every day, every day, Monday through Sunday. Mm-hmm. Like, every day, taking no days off. Um, and it had got to a point to where uh, I, was, I would go to sleep. At five in the morning, I'm up at nine hmm. every day. Hmm. So I would literally work till I got sick, and I used to know when I was gonna get sick. So I was like, I'm hmm. gonna go hard every day for three Shit. months, and then and that third month, I know I'm gonna get sick and hmm. have to have to chill for a week. It was like I my body already knew what was gonna happen. Yeah, so break, that's how yeah, yeah, that's how hard I went. I went till I literally got sick. Hmm. Damn. Yeah. That's some shit. But people right. be forgetting about that <laughs> brown work, man. Yeah, and you can still important. do it today to today and people get the, get that fucked up. Like mm. even though you can use social media, like you can still pull up in people's faces. People are still at malls and everything. Right, they you know is. I mean? They is. True. It's a little different. Um it's smarter cuz see, I spent so much money in the streets like now if you spend it on the internet, you're going to touch so many more people That's faster. True too. You know, That's um crazy but facts. It was what it was is, you know how now with social media, everybody got their phones out, you see? Right. So it's less interaction. Right, but back right, then, right. it wasn't the Instagram. We True. had Twitter, MySpace, but it wasn't like how it is now. True. You really a pass out like, what's up, man? My name, boom, and I introduced myself, and we could really have a report. You could feel my energy, mm-hmm. and I could feel mm-hmm. your energy. True. Compared to just like, I'm on the Instagram, and I got to show you everything I got going on. Mm-hmm. And it's like, now nah, I got to buy in because yeah. I want to live that same type of lifestyle. Mm-hmm. True. So, you know. You know, it is what it is. Um. So, when did you start to fall back in love with music and entertainment again? Because after going through some shit like that, you yeah. know, losing your mom and going through personal shit, mm-hmm. I done fell out of love with music before. Mm-hmm. Right. But talk about refalling in love with it, and then how did the business shift or change? Well, I thank my boy Miguel because I was at a point where I was done. You know, say so I had shut down my studio, and I was like, it's not fun no more. I got to find a new direction in life. I went on a spiritual journey. I went on all kind of stuff and was just like, man, I'm, I'm done with the music. As soon as I got done with it, I get a phone call. You feel me? Because of some plays that I had set up before. Planet you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, so my boy uh, Miguel, he hit me. It was like, boom. You know, because of what you did with linking me up with Todd, the artist we had got, Ray Dub, we got a million dollar deal. Damn. You know what I'm saying? And I want you to be a part of the company and help manage and help us build a company. And I was like, man, I'm done with the music, bro. Woo, woo. He's like, bro, I'm trying to tell you, I'm trying to bring you back. Woo, woo. So I was like, so he was like, look, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, buy you a ticket to New York. I'm going to fly you out to New York, and I want you to come to your meetings with us. And when he did that, it kind of re-sparked the energy in me mm-hmm. where it was like, back running through buildings i had new purpose because i had experienced so much hate and so mm-hmm. much negative energy and i didn't understand why you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying because it was like for me all i did was help people mm-hmm. but me helping people it was like people just hating on me and i was just like wow i don't get it like did i what did i do mm-hmm. like and the thing i had to realize was i was just being successful you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. and the thing is is when they when a person seen that i was down they were just kicking me while I was down because mm-hmm. I had did it so big mm-hmm. because I didn't just do music. I was in the promotional world, too. Yeah. So I used to throw the biggest parties in Atlanta. And a lot of these promoters, I'm going to put it even like this. A lot of the people you see in music now, you feel me? They all was party promoters. Like uh, mm. your Tune Day and Shine, they was party promoters. They overloved Renaissance. Mm-hmm. Uh, your Pats, who's with... Um, Drama, DJ Drama, and you know Playboy Cardi and Jack Harlow and all them. Like he was, a, he's a party. He was a party promoter. Some of them still do it. Like your Day Day, who was with Tig. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like your Measy, who's with Twenty One Savage and and um 
Nudie and all them, mm-hmm. and it's and it's some more I'm I'm missing mm-hmm. that's that was that cat like your Amber Grimes, you know what I'm saying? Uh, she she was you know I threw party with her, but they did K Camp and she worked ran Spotify Urban and work at Capital now. Mm-hmm. So it's a lot of people that came out the party world mm-hmm. that end up doing stuff in music, but I was the first one. Mm-hmm. Got you. you get where I'm coming okay. from, and then when we was doing parties, we were so competitive with the parties, yes. even like your boy Red. Who was just here oh, with yeah, Money Move? Sure. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He used to rap too. He didn't tell you, Money Move manager. We did a song <laughs> I didn't together. Know that. That's yeah, but he threw, as hell. yeah, okay. yeah. He threw parties, and you know now he's in music and he's doing great things. So, uh, but back then, mm. I used to do the biggest parties because even back then, I had MMI. That was the name of my brand back then, Making Moves uh, Incorporated, mm. and um, I threw the biggest parties at Figure Eight, and really in that 18 and up world, niggas really couldn't breathe until we stopped. Mm. You feel me? So a lot of that competition spilled over into the music when mm. everybody else started doing the music. What so, made you move from mm. doing the party promotion? Right. It was like my team, they like they kind of, the unity kind of stopped because, see, I'm a big team person, right? Mm. And so I'm going to get ready to drop y'all some gems, right? When you learn about business, business is a team sport. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't realize that people they like to be self-employed and do stuff they self, but they don't understand business is a team sport. It's meant to be done with with multiple people. You know what I'm saying? Because you're dealing like say if I'm self-employed, I'm one person. Let's break it down. I'm an artist, right? I'm one artist. Artists don't realize when you get in this music game, it's a competition. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Anytime I feel like there's a number one anything. It's a copy. Number one billboard, number one iTunes, number one on Spotify, number one, you know, it's a competition. You feel me? So I'm independent. I only got a little bit of funds, right? And I'm trying to compete against billion dollar companies that have thousands of employees. Mm -hmm. Who gonna win? You know what I'm saying? It's like so. It ain't even the best record at this point. It's not. It's about who got the big bank, take little bank. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Money ain't long enough. Team ain't strong enough. Mm. You get where I'm coming from? So you got to build your bank up and you got to build your team up. But the thing is, is once you start mastermind alliances, you feel me? You could really do damage because it's strength in numbers. Mm -hmm. We know that. So my thing is, even back then, I had like 200 people back then that would lock in that I would meet with at the club and we'll go crazy. So... Just reach it. It's the same thing I'm doing now. But the thing is, I'm just a whole lot wiser, a whole lot more confident, and I don't give a fuck. Excuse my French one more time. You know what I'm saying? Back then, I used to care. I used to care about how people felt, what mm. they think, but I realized they were just being selfish. They didn't want to see me win if they couldn't either mm. win with me. They just didn't mean me nowhere. You know what I'm saying? So now I know who I am. As you get older, I know who I am. I know my purpose, yeah. and, I, and I do things for my purpose. With a purpose and on purpose. Come on, pull it. Come on, for sure. It definitely seems like <laughs> God doesn't let you get outside your purpose. Like mm, even yeah, when you yeah. try, right. like he yeah. bring you back in. Yeah, and right. uh, will block something that might mess you up for one second, but really for something bigger. Right. But sometimes it's hard to uh, accept that. You know, like even right. when you said uh, the the first producer, like didn't really, you know, already had his team, but it was blocking that for right. a bigger blessing. I just kept going. I ain't give up. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Even when I wanted to give up, God didn't let me. So I'm here. I'm here now. And we turned up. We lit. Right. And what advice real. would you um <laughs> Don't what count. advice would you give to like build a team? Because building a team is not easy. You know what I'm it's saying? Not. So what advice would you give to build a successful team? Man, that's 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 a good question. Um, I believe we all got certain gifts. You feel me? Um and like some people are meant to lead and some people are meant to follow. You just got to know yourself, you know what I mean? And um, you got to align with the right people, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Everybody play a different role. Um, I had to be a good follower in order to be a good leader, you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I was in the military, so it taught me discipline, it taught me leadership. And then it's just about your spirit and caring about other people. Um, it's just natural, it's a gift, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So some people can lead a team and some people can join the team. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and you got, you got to know which is which. Uh, I know my skill sets. I know I'm a leader. I'm an alpha type personality. You know what I'm saying? I'm a dog. I don't quit. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been a part of a lot of team sports. So I understand I got to take care of my people and take care of my team. And people gravitate to people like that when they know it's genuine and they know it's real. And the key, most important thing, they know it's authentic. 
Okay. Okay. <laughs> Keyword. Okay. Authentic. Sure. Keyword. So. Authentic empire, man. Like, you mm-hmm. know, when we talk about successful, independent labels, um, definitely can't leave that out. Right. You know what I mean? So y'all are the topic of conversation. Um, so talk about just, you know, just aligning yourself up in that position, picking the right artists, knowing which artists to sign, you know, which producers to sign and all, all that. Once again, I think with me, it's, it's a gift. You feel me? It's not, it's like me. Most labels they're looking for artists that's bubbling up you know what i'm saying and then they try to it's a it's like a goal rush to try to catch that artist on the rise Mm -hmm. you feel me um me knowing my gifts because i come from a promotional world and a marketing world i know how to take an artist you've never heard of and make them somebody you feel me because i understand marketing and i understand promotions because i've been doing it for so long Mm -hmm. so when you see a euro got it or when you see a money move or when you see a uh, Roscoe Dash when he wasn't even known for his own song. Or I had Joe Green. I had A1 the Super Group. Mm-hmm. I was behind Charlie Boy Gang with the Beef It Up. I was mm-hmm. behind. You know, there's so many people. Mm-hmm. I understand. And then I have a gift. I have an ear for music at the same time. So a lot of it is gifting. People think that it's just formula. Like you can't. It's one LeBron James. It's one Steph Curry. That's mm-hmm. a gift. You get where I'm coming mm-hmm. from? Everybody can't do that. It's gonna be far and few between. You just gotta know your gift and, and utilize it, because everybody God gave everybody a gift. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, and uh, I know mine. I seen a video of you showing everybody on your team, uh-huh. and I think that was a reality check for like a lot of artists or anybody. I think they could do it by themselves, right? Right? That like, yeah, you you can stand out, but. The things you are doing is a certain team, like a machine behind right. you, even right. though um, you're in, independent. Right. Can you talk about like the certain machine, like machines behind you? Mm-hmm. Y'all got every sound effect <laughs> today, boy. <laughs> nah, but um, I see you going in different rooms, and you had like five people in each room, and it made me like, damn. Oh yeah. I don't think people understand this. It's it's really like so. First thing first. It's kind of like, man, I, I, it's just, I got to be able to, uh, I had to learn the money first. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Once you understand the money, then you understand you have to uh, compensate. So because of what I went through early on in my career, I didn't, I don't want no handouts. I feel that. You feel me? Because I felt like that was a lot of the reason why I got backlash. Because when you when you don't have no money and you really trying to get it, you get a lot of favors. So you you see a lot of times when you see these DJs, they they feel like, oh, I ain't supporting the artists no more. They blew up and they didn't give me no plaques. Mm-hmm. Or they didn't give me this. And they didn't, like, it's a big entitlement. But like me, I don't like entitlement. I'd rather just cash your ass out. How so you much? can't say nothing. Don't say nothing. How mm. much? I done paid you from the jump. Mm. And you can still, so now you can't say nothing. It's like, no, I cashed you out. You feel mm-hmm. me? So it ain't even about, oh, I did you a favor. I don't want nobody holding you. I agree with that. Yeah. yeah, man, I'm cashing everybody out. <laughs> you rocking with me, you want to work, I'm cashing your ass out. Mm-hmm. Believe it. Boom, got the check, and we he going to cash, cash your ass, ass out. <laughs> Real talk. Okay. Because I don't want no handout. And to me, it's more bossed up, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? To cast somebody out than to try to get something out of somebody and finesse them and finagle them. I'm not, I had to learn that and I feel like I took a lot of backlash because of that. So when I linked up with my partner, the first thing that we did was, hey, who I, once we figured out the money, because I was on the wave, he just opened my eyes and it hit me and I was woke. Mm-hmm. Oh, I get it. Debt, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I need to get more debt. Mm-hmm. You feel me? And so, at, I used to struggle and be like, I don't want no debt. Because we was raised like that. Like. Yeah. I ain't want no debt. Now, I want some debt. I ain't want no debt. I want some debt. And I was getting confused because you start listening to different people and, and their mentality about money. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So, I might listen to a Dave Ramsey and Dave Ramsey like get out of debt, eat ramen noodles, don't owe nobody. Don't woo, buy woo. no coffee. You don't, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, save your money, live below your means, woo, woo, woo. Mm-hmm. And then you go listen to a Grant Cardone, he like, shoot, I need more debt, you know what I'm saying? Get some debt, da 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 And then what happens is you start learning and doing your research. I start um, um, just different people, man, like just learning the economy and how it works and understanding it's only three ways to increase income. You feel me? 
uh, credit, debt, and productivity. You feel me? So once I realized, dang, it's only 24 hours in a day. I can only work so but so mm-hmm. hard. Mm-hmm. So now I need some credit, you know what I'm saying, so I could get certain stuff and I can hire some more people and I need some debt so I could get five of me or ten of me, you mm-hmm. feel me, in order to do a goal yeah. where I'm not just exhausted and doing it all by myself. So once I start hiring and paying people and the key is finding the right people. You know what I'm saying? It ain't finding a lot of people. It's finding the right people. And for me, it's about loyalty when it comes to uh, really building infrastructure because you got to find people you can trust. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You can't build without trust. Mm -hmm. You can't build nothing without trust. If I don't trust you, we ain't going to grow. We ain't going to go nowhere. Mm -hmm. So I dealt with a lot of females, and my situation is so unique and it's so awkward. If you seen, you would be like, (laughs) The hell? You know what I'm saying? But Awkward, like why? Because f- how many females you worked with? Yeah, it's like, it's it's crazy, but you know, it's family oriented. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, dang, you able to get all these different people to co Women be on their business, though. I ain't going to lie. Sleep on us. Yeah. yeah, nah, for sure. Mm-hmm. For sure. And more loyal. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Sure. Way more loyal. So, yeah, man, that's, that's, I figured out the money. And when I figured out the money, it was over with. You know what I'm saying? Because I already knew the plan on how I wanted stuff to move. Okay. Um, and, and talking about the money, one thing that we notice about you, like, y'all are going to charge for y'all time. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? And I respect that. So talk about, you know, charging people for a submission fees or whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes we get backlash as a media platform for charging for interviews. But I feel you. I feel like well, if we put it, time into it. It hit me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I did free shit for about seven years. And it didn't get me nowhere. Mm. But I know my worth and I know my value. And then when I looked at it, it's like, okay, I'm taking all my energy to blow up artists for them to get a check. Mm. (laughs) You get where I'm coming from? They have nothing. So I'm blowing you up. I'm taking my skills and my relationships. I'm blowing you up, showing you how to blow up for you to charge. Mm -hmm. Right? You're not doing stuff for free. You're not going to do free shows. You're not going to do uh, free appearances. You're not You're not going to do free features. You're not working for free. Mm-hmm. But you want me to work for free? Nah, that's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. I'm going to charge you because it's value to what I do. You know what I'm saying? And people pay. They they You get what you pay for. Mm-hmm. If I was doing it, like, they didn't respect it when I was doing it for free. Mm-hmm. Yo, that's a fact. You know what I'm saying? So it's like everybody has a value. And, and the people who feel like you should just do something for free, I don't rock with them because that's handouts and that's that entitlement stuff. It's like, I don't even know you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Show love, man. We from the same place. You can't nah, look you out for You show love. This. Bless me for right, my right. for my information nah, and my knowledge in the years of suffering and persecution that I had yeah, to go right, through to real. get to this point where you even want it. And you mm-hmm. kind of respect somebody more. You can build with somebody outside of whatever they gave you initially. Yeah. You know, but sometimes that just makes them a little different than everybody else mm-hmm. asking for handouts. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, and, and I'm still and I still blessed because I take artists like a Euro got it, like a Fujiano, like a Money Move, and I give back and I help change lives so I don't have to feel like I owe somebody anything because I know what yeah. I do you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying I know how what kind of father I am you know what I'm saying what kind of husband I am mm-hmm. like I know what I do for the people that's around me yeah. you know what I'm saying for my kids and the whole nine so I don't have to ever feel no type but that's just your opinion you telling me how you feel and I don't live my life based off feelings mm-hmm. I live my life based off facts mm-hmm. I can't pay my bills with your beliefs and your feelings mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying yeah. <laughs> like real talk oh, shit you know what I mean? <laughs> so, okay. The, the respect. Respect. And I feel that 100%. Um, can we go down the roster of artists that you have on a label and talk about why you signed each of them? It's on a sleeve. Go down your sleeve. Look. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Mm, uh, that's, I ain't even peeked. Uh, I ain't even peeked. Yeah. Okay, where? That's all right. Uh, man. Uh, so, I start with Euro. Euro about to come out with his project yeah. uh, this weekend. Um, he got the form forever. He got some of everybody on it. Um, I signed Euro because I thought Euro was different. He was Atlanta. He was unique, and he had substance in his music. I was like, to me, Euro still probably lyrically, substance-wise, he's probably one of the hardest artists that we got on the roster. Mm. Um, Fujiano, he won the showcase, and he's a superstar. You get mm-hmm. where I'm coming from? Like an amazing talent. Like he's gonna put on a show, and he got the lyrics and and. And he's everybody is authentic. You know where I'm coming from. Like mm. if he said he, <laughs> he yeah. mean it. You get yeah. where I'm coming from. Like Fu ain't one of them type of people who gonna cap you. 
he's not going to cap you down. He's going to mm-hmm. tell you the truth. And he know who he is. So I respect Fu because he's one of the real real artists that, is, that knows exactly who he is. Uh, money move, man. Like, money move. Spirit, bro. Like, mm-hmm. one of the most genuine people I know. And he's the easiest artist I ever work with. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Uh, his, just, his heart was in the right place. Every time, his energy, every time I walked up to him, it was always love. I never got no whole tendencies from him. Period. No, oh, he feeling animosity, and I was pushing other. It was always love, and I felt like he had. He was super talented. I had super dope music. Um, YSN, no more is just hard. They 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 that young energy, uh, young street trap energy. They hard. You know what I'm saying? Um, I was just blown away. I, they lyrical. They, they they got a combination of all the artists combined, you know what I'm saying, in that one group. They super dope. Um, A.G. Lottie, he won 100000 on the showcase that we gave away oh, at Christmas. Um, he's from Florida, different energy. I didn't pick him. So when we do these showcases, uh, even with food, the artists pick the, the winner. Oh, the okay. staff, so how I do it, my staff pick uh, finalists, uh, my executive staff pick the top artists and the top three or five artists and then the artists pick the number the mm-hmm. artists they want out of that group mm-hmm. um ag lottie doughboy d Lil thumper uh, all of them came from from that from how that often tip. do you do those uh we got the next one is going to be fourth of july and it's going to be try. let me work on my <laughs> yeah nah it's going and we giving That's away dope. a slave deal on independence day that's dope. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're giving away a whip and a chain and 25k, but I'm not gonna do uh, a whip and a chain. Yeah, we're gonna declare our independence. I ain't. It ain't gonna be no contractual thing. I don't believe in doing Diddy type deals. I'm one of them type of people. The contract is a formality. The moment you don't want to work with me, I don't want to work with you. Cause once again, because once again, guess what? I know my worth. Mm-hmm. I've but made many of you. <laughs> I guess it's just from, putting so the money, the all that money into artists and them being able to leave. I don't work for money. I don't care about yeah. it. I can't die with it. I learned the money. I keep telling you that. Yeah. The money ain't real. Mm-hmm. See, I, don't, I, don't, I gotta be nah, quiet. Nah, I get it. <laughs> I, 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 I gotta be quiet. The money's not real. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's real because we believe it's real. It's the same thing now. You see, it's just, new, it's just currency. You feel mm-hmm. me? And um, once you understand it and understand it's about information, information has the value Mm -hmm. not the money not the house not the car not the cash it's the information it's knowing when to buy when to sell knowing oh home sitting on he he know this old lady want to get rid of her house and it's foreclosed then she don't owe no money on it you Mm -hmm. feel me i can go to the bank and get it for a thousand dollars and flip it it's the information you know what i'm saying um but multiply money money's a doubles game people don't really understand money's a doubles game so it's all a game you mm-hmm. feel me and it's a game that was made up in a system and i could go deep because you know i do a lot of study and i like i said it's about information i understand the money comes from the federal reserve the federal reserve controls the influx the federal reserve controls whether we have a recession or a depression mm-hmm. whether you know what i'm saying well whether we're going to be up or down because they control um interest rates mm. you feel me they loan to the other banks if they stop loaning to the other banks the other banks stop loaning to you you feel me like i said it's only three ways to increase income credit debt and productivity right. so you need it's called a debt cycle you feel me so what y'all seeing now with all these ppp loans and all these different kind of loans sba loans that's the federal reserve injecting money into the economy to keep the economy flowing it's called a deleveraging you feel mm-hmm. me mm-hmm. so you know that makes sense. Like shit, <laughs> it's trying yeah, to prevent us from going into a depression. Broke, yeah, that makes you sense. You know what I'm saying? Because like of shit. COVID, because they giving that shit out. Like you can have it, you yeah. can have it. You but can what's going to happen is the money's going to inflate, and when mm. the money inflate, you're going to have a larger gap between rich people and poor people. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? So you know, once you learn that and understand and understand what banks look like, like I said on a previous interview, yeah. I learned the bank game. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Learned the credit card game. Learned about the four types of credit. Learned about authorized users. So I was able to leverage and put together stuff. So I'm gonna give, like I did a previous interview, I gave away some gems. I'm gonna give y'all some more gems so they could connect it to. Okay. You get all come from. They can watch this one. Now they watch this one. They say, okay, cool. I put this together with this together, right? So I told y'all about the account receivable game on a future interview. Mm-hmm. Now I'm gonna tell y'all about the credit card game, right? So. I like to say all the time, 
I got over 100 credit cards. All with my name on it. What? Right? Yeah. I got almost a million dollars in credit. Damn. Credit card. The reason why I have almost a million dollars in credit card is because, like I said, teamwork make the gene work. It's something called an AU. What's an AU? It's an authorized user. Mm-hmm. Right? You learn I've been the four putting my people on to it. Right. You learn the four types of credit. Mm -hmm. Personal, business, family, and credit partners. Right? So now, I got personal credit. I can use all my personal credit. I can run it up, get... Let, so I could run it up and I can get a bunch of cards in my personal. I got family credit. It's my family. You know, my mom, my dad, my sisters, my brothers, whatever. They get credit cards, add me as an authorized user. I got a credit card from them. Mm. You get where I'm coming from? I got business credit. I got LLCs. You know what I'm saying? I got an incorporation. If my profile look a certain type of way, guess what I go do? I don't go get business credit, credit. Right. Yeah. And, and, and I can run up the credit cards. Mm -hmm. But see, then you got credit partners. So guess what? You my partner, you my partner, you my partner. Guess what? My credit partners, damn near all of them got 800 credit scores mm -hmm. because we make sure everybody is taken care of. Mm -hmm. So guess what? Anytime we need more credit, we go get it. You That's feel crazy. Me? In a business name. So now you add me as an authorized user on your credit, your credit, your credit, your credit. Guess what? I have access. Mm-hmm. To multiple credit cards from multiple people and so it becomes an ecosystem you feel me and so and then it's it's ways to, so if you want to learn how to get these multiple credit cards and how they lend it that's what you got to tap into the flp you mm -hmm. got to get in with me but it's real game you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. real game i can show you i ain't got my big credit card with me my big credit card book but you know it's just like simple stuff like this is a platinum i ain't got a goal yet you know what i'm saying because it's certain rules mm -hmm. but you see I think yep. I think the empire on that one. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see. I don't have all my cards. See, that's what I'm gonna do next time. I'm gonna bring bring mm -hmm. the whole book. Like I'm gonna bring the book. <laughs> I'm gonna bring the book so people know I ain't capping. You know what I'm saying? So I my gotta question do is, are you paying? Um, because I heard it a couple times, paying one credit with another credit, <laughs> and then it'd be different times, so you could just it's, keep rotating that money. It's called rolling debt. Yeah, yeah, yeah we do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you do that. Now I think you um, got it. It's a skill, but see the thing is, like I said, it takes teamwork. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. It's just like that's a tricky game, but mm -hmm. you gotta you gotta know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And are you teaching everybody all this stuff, or like they just know and then y'all all just know together? Like who is teaching everybody all this shit? Well, you know my boy Energy, he runs the FLP. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, and what's the FLP it? stand for? Financial Literacy Program. So I mean, you guys are running one. Yeah, we got one, but we we we're we're sketchy on who we offer it to. Mm -hmm. You feel where I'm coming from? Because it's like it's a lot of sensitive information and people can really run off on mm -hmm. banks and run off on credit cards and really mess stuff up it's like that's like what on some scam that's mm -hmm. exactly and you know people already feel like i'd be scammed you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like uh because people think i'm taking this money and i do this because yeah. i want to i don't do it because i got to okay you feel right. me like i do music simply out of love and passion mm -hmm. because i feel like everybody should work for their purpose mm -hmm. once you figure out the money now you don't have no anxieties now mm -hmm. i feel like within the, like the last year we educated ourselves a little more than we ever have been educated mm -hmm. and then you start being like damn this how they doing it like mm -hmm. it ain't no fraud shit but it's really working the yeah. system you know what i mean even with authorized users and mm -hmm. all that stuff and it's like we i think uh our culture is finally starting to at least want to know about it outside mm -hmm. of just scamming, right. you know what I mean? So right. That's there there ain't no need that. to scam when you know what you're doing and, and understand. Like, for me, my face card means everything, and that's including with banks. So I look at banks like I look at plugs. Mm -hmm. So in the street, you got your plugs. The plug, they, what they do, they front you a bag, they front you a sack, they front you whatever, right? And, what, and the goal is, guess what? Get the money and give it back to them within 30 days mm -hmm. with a profit. Mm-hmm. Same thing with a bank. Mm -hmm. You get a credit card, guess what that is? That's a bank. Mm -hmm. You feel me? You give me the money, I'm going to use it, I'm going to pay it back fast. Mm -hmm. You're going to increase my limit. Mm -hmm. But you know what I think was the biggest issue that I didn't realize? Like, everybody want money, but don't know how to make that money that when they finally get it, make mm -hmm. more money for them. You know what I'm saying? That's simple, though. But I, I think that's what a lot of people messed up on. Like, if you had 20000 you might just sit there like, damn, how can I make this make money for me? And I think we're finally starting to so, learn yeah. ways to. Well, that's that's simple, man. It's a, it's just about, like I say, money is just a tool. 
So for most people, they don't understand. All money is is a reward for a job well done. Mm. You feel me? It's not the thing you work for. You feel where I'm coming from? It's like people are chasing money and it runs from them. Mm. Oh, money, money, money. I got to get this. Oh, I'm about my bag today. Oh, I got to get the bread. Boo, boo. What is you doing with it? I see all these people with stacks of money. What are we doing That's with it? Yeah. It's like, I don't like cash. You feel me? So it's like, I'm working for a purpose. My purpose is to build a great company. You feel mm-hmm. me? And the money is just saying, hey, guess what? I'm going to pay you, boom, because I like what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Here's a reward. Thank you for this service. Mm-hmm. Or thank you for that opportunity. Or thank you. You know, and it's just an exchange. Mm-hmm. You feel where I'm coming from? For whatever you're doing. So, like it is, like I said, it's only, it's just a reward for a job well done. The money is meant to be put back into the system. It's a currency. Mm -hmm. So, it's supposed to be put into something else to create more of it. You know what I'm saying? So, it's like, y'all should uh, read this book called Richest Man in Babylon. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Either read it or listen to the audio book. If you could get through it, you'll understand the principle and you'll understand how to diversify your cash flow. Money is nothing, man. It's easy. It's simple. You know what I'm saying? And it's about manifestation. All you got to do is work towards something and reverse engineer it. It's like, it's nothing. You'll never go broke if you mm-hmm. do stuff with a purpose and do it genuinely from your heart. People, You'll be amazed. People will pay you. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because they know you're passionate about it. Mm-hmm. Respect, man. That's that's beautiful. Um, and we definitely appreciate the money talk. You know what I mean? For sure. Anytime. Put us on. I want to I wanna go back into sure. the music a little bit, though. I definitely want to talk about Fujiano's situation. Mm-hmm. Um, because, you know, I think we was all surprised to hear the sentence that he received. Right. You know what I mean? I think I was just like, damn. I damn sure wasn't expecting that. Mm-hmm. He is definitely, I think, a lot of our favorite mm-hmm. rising artists. You know, right. we, we appreciate his energy. And get that ball on that you double XL I mean? fresh McCover, man. Right. Let's go. Let's do yeah. it. So, can we talk about his situation um, and, you know, what he's going through right now? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't want to go too deep into his situation. Um, even though he had he got his sentence, you know what I'm saying? Like, you never know what could come back up, and I don't want to put nothing yeah. on no camera that's going to um, put anybody in any kind of situation because it's a lot of the sensitive information. But the thing about his sentencing is this right here. Um, you know, he cut off his ankle monitor, you know what I'm saying, or – burnt or whatever it, it, it got removed you know what i'm saying so uh they just gave him time t- from his probation just to finish out his probation for for mm-hmm. violating for violating his probation okay. so in a nutshell that's really what happened i had a knee-jerk reaction to it i was hurt because i felt like it was excessive mm-hmm. um but that's because i know the man and i know when i was watching that court hearing on zoom how they really just didn't care. It felt racist. They didn't care. He had a family. He had kids. Uh, and he, he really violated for some stuff that he really didn't have nothing to do with. But at the end of the day, um, we all could do things differently. You know what I'm saying? But hopefully, I think, if I'm hoping he'll be able to just do like a year, 18 mm-hmm. months or something like that, get out, and we back at it. But we we working it. We in the process of working on some more music, okay. uh, even while he's gone. And I have a call with him on Monday. You know what I'm saying? And we're going to put a project together and we're just going to keep his name alive and we're just going to keep him pushing. So, Free Food, man, I need everybody to like in and support what he's doing. And and he got a song called Free Food out right now. You know what I'm saying? It's growing on me a lot. You know, I find myself just listening to it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, he a good dude, man. So, he got a lot of music recorded? Yeah, he got a lot of music recorded. Okay. He seemed like he got a hell of a work ethic. For um. sure. For sure. He love it. It's a passion. Can you explain how it works with him being signed to 1017 as well? Because that was always something I wanted to know. How does that work when you do that? Okay, well, situation is, uh, how this came about is, uh, I signed Fujiano when he won the, um, when he won the Indy King Showcase. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I end up doing a deal. I shot the video. We end up doing a deal with Atlantic. Um, when we did the deal with Atlantic, Gucci Man hit me. And was like, bro, that's a great sign. Congratulations, you did a great deal. He hard. I love him. Keep going up, boom. And I was like, what? I was like, I was like, I said, man, Gucci just hit me and was just like, congratulations. He heard. I was like, how you find out that fast? So I guess he had ears and eyes in the building. Mm-hmm. And fool was like, man, that's my he because we had seen a post where he was giving away a million dollars. And he was like, that's my dog. Tell him I'm 10 17, bro. Tell woo woo. So I FaceTime him. He, he picked up at FaceTime. 
And he picked up your FaceTime. Fool got on the thing. He was like, nigga, I'm coming to see you. I'm coming to see you. You know what I'm saying? That he's like, he like, I am 1017, bro. You just don't know what I am 1017. Mm-hmm. So Fool was telling him that the whole time he was doing it. And um, he was like, bro, come on, bro. I'm with you. Let's do it. Da, da, da. And then I was like, after that, I was like, man, we got to find a way to get Gucci involved. Mm. So I told Craig, I was like, hey, Gucci want to be involved. I think we should make him involved. Uh, And he was like, that's easy. He said, I just did a situation over here with Gucci for the new 1017. That would be dope. I could boo woo woo. And so, you know, after that, we just ironed out the details. It made sense. He was up and coming artist. It just made sense, and so mm-hmm. we just made it happen. And that shows when you Dope. say you're not just chasing the money because Facts. you right. could easily been like, "Oh no, nah, that's all me. I found this." But right. Like yo, some that make it bigger, it's all gonna come back to you. Man, I had to let Gucci know. It's like even with Fujiano because you know all those artists. You know, a lot of times when you start doing stuff, they feel like they make you and stuff like that. So the first thing I did with Fu was like, let me show you my bank account, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, no cap. I said, this is what I did this month. Mm. This is what I did last month. This is what I did the month before that. Mm. And he was like, ooh. Mm. And I was like, I'm already good, my boy. Straight <laughs> up. You know what I'm saying? Don't think I'm doing this because I'm trying to survive or pay my bills or finesse or none of that. Mm. So that's why I'm able to help these artists in so many ways because I'm blessed and I learned how to do it legally. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's so, Okay. Yeah. Um, and just with having multiple artists on the label, sometimes you never know who's going to take off first. Right, right. Talk about that. You know what I mean? Because I think, you know, a lot of us seen, like, I remember going to old Euro listening events. So we like, all right, Euro about to take off. You coming tomorrow? I am gonna come tomorrow. Well, I know sure. it's at seven o'clock. We're gonna be in there. All right, right? For the sure. fire support in there. Let us in for at the sure. door. Come on, you good. All right, you we good, good at the it's door. Free. free food, free drink. I love sure. set up your shop, whatever you wanna do. You, okay, you period. Good. We on. in there. Don't tell but, us. We not like, facts. Take but, over, go ahead. Um with Euro, you know, it was times where we like, oh, he about to take the fuck off. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? I think on a level where we like we see Fujiano, everybody knowing him as a household mm-hmm. name. So talk about dealing with that. Well, everybody fight their own they own demons and got their own battles. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, sometimes it's just like it, like with me, it's just about not giving up and staying at it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then as you as you enter in something like everything is new. So for Euro, he he handled it one way. You know what I'm saying? It was new for him, um, but I think he handled it well. He stayed down. Um, he supported. He rocked out. And so now it's just about timing and just staying consistent. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's just about what it is, man. A lot of people feel like everything is supposed to happen overnight. We building careers. You know what I'm saying? It's it's about building blocks. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And everything ain't for everybody. Somebody might meant to be super, super big, and somebody might just have a solid underground fan base. You know, you never know how it's going to turn out. Your goal as an artist, though, is to build fans every day. That's just your job. Build fans. Build core fans uh, where they locked in with you and they rock it with you. And then you got to you gotta make sure you feed your fans. You got to feed them. They want content. They want music. They want So you got to stay working and stay aggressive. And a lot of times when you first doing it, it's new. It's a new experience. We're going through it and we're learning. And I feel like, you know, that was a training period for Euro. And I think he, he sees it now. He ready. He hungry. True. He understand it. He got to see Fujiano do it. He's watching Money Moo doing it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, independently. So, Fu did it with a major. Money Moo is doing it independently. Think yes. about it. Mm-hmm. Money Moo still ain't got no deal. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Had one of the top records in the country. They want to see, can he do it again? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, because it's about building a career. So, now he got the problems record. So, it's just increasing your stock as you keep going mm-hmm. on and along and along. And then when people pass you. You just make them, you know, you just make them eat their words or, you know, and that's what it's about. What's your heart like? Mm-hmm. Facts, man. Um, can we get some tips for longevity? Um, Man, I would just say, man, I would say, man, be a student of the game of whatever industry that you decide you want to be in. You know what I'm saying? Learn, man. Like, people just want to eye hustle and ear hustle. You feel me? They want to just say, oh, okay, I see how they doing it. I'm going to try it, and then don't work. Then they go do something. You know what I'm saying? It's like, learn, man. Know who the top is, top people on the charts. I get so many artists say, man, I don't listen to nobody else's music. I'm like, do you not know you in a competition, fool? <laughs> like, you should know who making what beats and who's top on the charts and who they using. Like, most people in music, right, I asked them, I said, man, who's the most powerful person in music? They don't even know. Hmm. Do y'all know? The most powerful person? Mm-hmm, in music. Are you nah. trying to say it's not yeah. a, like a particular person? You said the most powerful person. The most powerful person in music. 
His name is Lucian Grange. Hmm. He runs Universal. Hmm. Every year on the Billboard Top 100, he's the most powerful person in music. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like you just got to know who's who and study the game. Who's at this label? Who's running Atlantic? Craig Calvin, Julie Greenwald. Who's running hmm. Capital? Right now, um, dang, Jeff Vaughn. You know what I'm saying? It's just like you just got to know who's in what buildings and who's at Atlantic. Who's your competition? Yeah, is? with Mike Karen. Yep. Huh? Do you, are you saying like know who your competition is? Yeah, you got to know. You got to know how you want to maneuver. You got to study the game. You having these meetings, but you don't know. You got to know. Shoot, what kind of budgets they working with? What what time frame we in? Like, what did the last person get on they? It's just like you got to study the game. You know, people just want to. Artists don't know the difference between mechanical royalties and performance royalties. They throwing stuff at the wall and hoping it stick. They don't even know how they are gonna get their money. Mm -hmm. So I be telling artists, I'm like, you know how you gonna get your money in the streets though, right? Mm -hmm. How much a bag? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's thirty four. How much is a brick? Mm -hmm. duh, duh. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Well, how you, what's mechanical royalties? I don't know what that is, but you want to do music though, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you go say, oh, home put me in a bad deal, nigga. You ain't studying <laughs> what you doing, but you know everything about the streets. Right. Can't nobody get over on you because you studied it. You right. studied the kingpins. You studied. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Petey Pop, whatever his name is, Pablo, whatever, all the drug dealers. Yeah. You know? yeah. Cocaine Cowboys. Yeah. It's, it, it, what's, what's the name? The, Freeway. Uh, yeah. Pablo Escobar. You see, you see what I said? We know all them. That's a fact, though. You know what I'm saying? But we don't know the top people in the business that we're trying to get into. A lot of us want to be entrepreneurs. We don't know who the top entrepreneurs is. Mm. A lot of people don't know who Elon Musk is. Mm. A lot of people don't know. You know what I'm saying? They heard of the Bill Gates and the, you know. But they, uh, study them. but they don't study. They don't know what companies is what, who's the top companies, who's running these companies. We don't study what we want to know. That's why I said you got to study the money. You know, you want to live a different lifestyle, study the person whose lifestyle you want to be like. Facts. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Everybody wants something different. So, you know, that's what longevity, man, mm -hmm. is to be a student. Respect. Hell yeah, that, man! Yeah. You done gave us some shit tonight, man. <laughs> we, we gonna oh my God. God. Like, damn, let me, let me make sure sure <laughs> nah, <laughs> man, this, this was dope. Um, you know, we definitely appreciate this. For um, sure. we definitely got you know a final question that we like to ask all our guests. Cool. Um, we like to ask them what the word progress means to them. You know, this is mm. a progress report. So, what does the word progress mean to you? Hmm. Man, uh, progress means you know moving forward towards your goals. You know what I'm saying? As uh, long as you're moving forward towards your goals, you're progressing. Mm -hmm. You get where I'm coming from? That's progress to me. Facts. Hell yeah. So what's next? What's coming up next right now? Um, we got Euro Got It For and Forever. Mm -hmm. That's dropping. It's crazy. Uh, crazy features on that job. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy. Like, that's his best tape by far. It's a classic. Mm -hmm. They're going to be riding to this one for sure. Mm -hmm. um, we got that coming up. Um, we got the new artist Doughboy D. We finna go crazy with Doughboy D, uh, AG Lottie, YSN, got working on a new project. Man, it's just a lot going on. We got this A uh, headquarters that we working on. We just got the whole floor on the um, 101 Marietta Street building. Dope. Now we doing something that's never been done there. You know what I'm saying? It's like two studios in the sky. They're going to be crazy. It's a lounge. It's a bar. It's a mm. pool. It's a, like It's like in the sky. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For independent label offices. So you get... Independent artists have a chance to get a real feel of going to a label, getting their music heard, you know what I'm saying, working with real people, you know what I'm saying, like who set up this situation for me is with Tamiko. That's the homie. I've yeah. been looking up to her for so long. Yeah. She real always PR. get back. For so sure. Tamiko going to have for her sure. office in the building, so you better walk. Real, just real nice. relationships and people who really good at what they do, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. So this is a great platform and an opportunity for independent artists, and we just raising the bar. Mm -hmm. Raising the bar, man. And I appreciate y'all and I love what y'all are doing. Thank and you. it's a pleasure to be on the show with y'all. Thank y'all for this opportunity. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. A lot of energy, man. For sure, for sure, man. We appreciate you, man. Uh, thank you so much for tonight. All I think right. a lot of people love. got a lot out of it. So, yeah. Yep. Come on, man. Cool. Boom, man. Still booming. Let's go. All right, man. It's the progress prayer. We out. What's going on? It's your girl, Lala Shepard. Boss Brit the most lit. What's up? It's your girl, DJ Excel. And look, we interview some of the biggest artists on the come up. Hey, man, if you ever in Atlanta, y'all make sure y'all hit us up now. Hey, hit us up today. It's where you need to be, man. A progress support. DM us right now. Let's go. We in stay at nine. Tune in every time. We don't do no cap. Report only facts. Progress report. We got the news. New in the views. We got the stats. Keep it a rack. Don't join the pack. Know where we at. We in stay at nine. 
tune in every time. We don't do no cap. Report only facts. Uh, Crackers report. We got the news. Knowing the views. We got the stats. Keep it a wreck.